Good afternoon. Uh, welcome and thank you to everyone for being here today for this important announcement. As we begin, I'd like to acknowledge that we are gathered on Treaty 1 territory and that Manitoba is located on the treaty territories of the, of the Anishinaabeg, Anishinawak, Dakota Oyate, Dene Sulene, and Nahuthwak peoples. We also acknowledge that Manitoba is located on the homeland of the Red River Métis. And we acknowledge that northern Manitoba includes lands that were and are the ancestral lands of the Inuit. We respect the spirit and intent of treaties and treaty making and remain committed to working in partnership with First Nations, Inuit and Métis peoples in the spirit of truth, reconciliation and collaboration. My name is James Teitzma and I'm the MLA for Radisson and also the newly appointed Legislative Assistant for the Minister of Health. I'm very happy to be here for today's announcement with Premier Heather Stephenson and with uh, Health Minister Audrey Gordon. And we're also joined today by Doctors Manitoba President Dr. Candace Bradshaw and Jennifer Kumsty, who is the Executive Director for Acute Health Services at HSC Winnipeg. I also want to acknowledge uh, that uh, Sarah Guimard, the Minister of Mental Health and Community Wellness is here, as well as John Reyes, the Minister of Advanced Education, Skills and Immigration, and Scott Johnston, the Minister for Seniors and Long-Term Care. So thank you to all our invited guests for joining us today. I would like now to invite Premier Heather Stephenson to the podium for today's important announcement. Thank you very much, James, and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, great to be here uh, with all of you today for this very exciting announcement. In fact, I think it was about a year and a half ago that I was in the women's hospital here, um, and uh, the incredible care that I received, and they were so wonderful to our, our family, and I just want to thank all the doctors and nurses and the healthcare professionals who made that uh, experience for me and, and my family. Uh, an incredible one and uh, we recognize every day the incredible work that each and every one of you do and thank you for that. So it's a pleasure to be here today. We are joined uh, by uh, my colleagues as well as representatives from Doctors Manitoba, Shared Health and our health system leaders from across this great province of ours. Manitobans and all Canadians expect their leaders to come together to solve issues that matter most to them. Access to high quality health care is one of the most important issues for all Canadians. We know that. Canadians know that. The federal government knows that. From coast to coast to coast, Canadians are suffering through pandemic backlogs while they wait for the tests, procedures, and other health services that they need. Now more than ever, all Canadians need a new health care funding partnership to ensure the sustainability of our systems now and well into the future. They deserve nothing less. For two and a half years throughout the unprecedented global pandemic and beyond, premiers have sought a national conference with the Prime Minister to discuss and address the healthcare needs of all Canadians to ensure that healthcare workers and the testing capacity and the procedures and the systems and the facilities they rely on are there for them now and for decades to come. A stronger, more sustainable and resilient healthcare system supported by stable, adequate and predictable healthcare funding delivered through the Canada healthcare, the Canada health uh, transfer is needed. Based on increasing the current federal funding share from just 22% to 35% and keeping it there. But unfortunately, the federal government has so far failed to act on this critical issue. Uh, there was no commitment in the federal fiscal update to increase the federal share of health funding and despite multiple previous commitments and clear assurances, uh, the Prime Minister is still refusing to meet with Canada's premiers to pursue a new Canada Health Transfer Agreement. So we will never stop uh, pressing the federal government to fulfill their commitment for funding that helps us deliver better and more sustainable health care for all Manitobans and for all Canadians. But in the meantime, we will continue to take necessary provincial action. We have an obligation to get things done for the benefit of all Manitobans. 
As a government, we are making strategic and historic investments in our infrastructure, and most importantly, our people, who are at the heart of our healthcare system. And so today, together with our health system leaders, I am pleased to launch Manitoba's Health Human Resources Action Plan to increase our staffing capacity by 2,000 healthcare professionals across the province with an additional $200 million investment. This action plan is made up of three pillars. The first pillar is to retain our current staff. Initiatives in this plan will retain existing healthcare staff, recognize the contributions made by healthcare staff throughout the pandemic, and support staff as they recover from the impacts of these challenging few years. It also includes making healthcare workplaces safer and supportive. The second pillar is to train more health professionals through the expansion of Manitoba's health care programs across the province. And the third pillar is to recruit new staff through immigration and graduation by removing barriers, uh, currently keeping health care professionals from practicing Manitoba. I am pleased to share that significant consultation has already occurred on the action plan with many stakeholders including frontline staff, unions, regulators, employers, and post-secondary training institutions, and those who have joined us here today. And I also want to take this opportunity to commend the Minister for the hard work that she has done, as well as the departmental staff who have put in a lot of hours towards this as well. This act this action plan is a critical turning point to address Manitoba's health human resource challenges, something all jurisdictions across the country are facing. We look forward to continuing to work collaboratively and respectfully with all stakeholders to build a stronger, more sustainable health system with more healthcare professionals. Finally, I want to take a moment to recognize all the healthcare staff on the front lines. Thank you for your dedication, for your com compassion, and for your commitment to provide quality care for your patients, especially during these incredibly challenging and unprecedented times. We are here for you, we are listening to you, and we are taking action on your behalf. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Premier Stephenson, for those remarks. I will now pass it over to uh, Minister Gordon. Thank you, MLA Teitzma, and uh, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for being here with us today. I just want to pause to recognize our health system leaders who are here today. I have Adam Topp, who's the CEO of Shared Health, Brian Schoenbert, who is the head of the Prayer Mountain Health uh, Regional Health Authority, uh, Helga Bryant from Northern Regional Health Authority, Jane Curtis from Southern, Regional Health Authority, Mike Nader, who is the CEO of WRHA, and Sean Young, who's the COO at Health Sciences Centre. So thank you so much for joining us, and to my colleagues, welcome. And uh, to Doctors Manitoba, welcome. Thank you for joining us. And uh, the Executive Director of Acute Health Services, thank you so very much, Jennifer, for, for being here today. Thank you, Premier Stephenson, for your incredible announcement that will help all Manitobans. This investment is, is a strong message to Manitobans that our Premier and our government has listened and we care. I want to thank every doctor and every nurse and every health professional in Manitoba. These last few years and months you've given our province and every patient in it your time, compassion and your medical expertise. You've sacrificed with your families, stretched your mental health, and have dealt with immense pressures. 
I want you to know that we hear you and we are here for you. And today is the direct result of that. This week, I had the opportunity to attend the Federal, Provincial and Territorial Health Ministers meeting in Vancouver. I spoke with provincial and territorial colleagues who reinforced for me that Manitoba is not alone in these challenges. I heard about their challenges with staff in their emergency departments, staff in their clinics, and we shared amongst us our, our best practices. And it's paramount today that we act boldly and take action. I know and you know that we are strongest when we work together. Our government has been collaborating extensively with all levels of the healthcare system from leadership to frontline, unions, regulators, employers, and post-secondary training institutions. This collaboration and partnership is quintessential to the success of this plan and ongoing efforts to help address health human resource capacity in Manitoba. Today signals that this collaboration is only just beginning. And I want to say respect starts with listening. And we've heard the concerns of frontline nurses who are required to work 14 or 16 hours in a single shift due to staffing challenges. Today, we're committing to work towards ending mandating and the excessive overtime hours nurses are required to work. As Minister of Health, I've asked the CEOs of each healthcare organization to establish plans to reduce the burden that overtime is causing for nurses. This is the right thing to do. As Premier Stephenson mentioned, this plan is built upon three pillars, retain, train, and recruit. Retaining our approximately 40,000 healthcare workers is critical and the first and most important pillar. We will provide financial incentives to incentivize and encourage staff to work weekend shifts. We will offer full-time incentives for existing staff. We are covering the licensing fees for the next two years for all licensed health professionals. We know that large emergency departments face unique safety concerns due to the size of the facility and the volume of the people who are accessing care. To help our staff feel safer in their workplaces, we're taking steps to increase the number of institutional safety officers, as well as implementing a pilot program whereby amnesty lockers have been installed at Health Sciences Centre to address safety concerns expressed by emergency department staff. Our healthcare employers have supported the creation of the Manitoba Association for Safety in Healthcare. And this is a safety association for the health sector whose goal is to reduce workplace injury claims and to improve both physical and mental health and safety working conditions for Manitoba's healthcare workers. We continue our efforts to implement a provincial agency, provincial float pool, which was committed to in the 2021 Manitoba Nurses Union Collective Agreement. This will help to reduce the health system's reliance on the use of private agencies to fill vacant nursing positions in our province. And we will work with Doctors Manitoba to support incentives to strengthen physician practices in Manitoba. And we want to ensure that citizens can access primary care services instead of seeking that care at emergency departments. This includes financially supporting physician clinics that want to expand evening and weekend hours to help ease burdens on emergency departments to provide primary care services. We are implementing a program called Vectors, which helps to connect rural and remote healthcare providers with a centralized emergency physician consultation service, thereby supporting rural healthcare and eliminating unnecessary medevac transfers for rural Manitobans. In addition, we will expand tools to support physician to physician collaboration and improve patient care by allowing better rapid consultation 
with specialists streamlining consultations, including implementing secure medical messaging to all physicians for free and expanding the e-consult program. Let's go to the training pillar. We will provide training for healthcare staff at all levels, as well as those entering the system. Over the past few months, we've made several announcements that expand Manitoba training programs. We're working in partnership with post-secondary institutions to add more than 400 new nursing training seats, fulfilling our government's commitment made in 2021. We implemented the Anesthetist Clinical Assistant Program to address the worldwide shortage of anesthetists and to support the pandemic surgical backlog. We expanded the respiratory therapist program at the University of Manitoba by 20%. As one of only three training institutes in Canada, we've made an interprovincial training seed purchase at British Columbia Institute of Technology. This will increase our local supply of EEG technicians who specialize in electroneurophysiology. And we continue to consult and plan with our post-secondary institutions across Manitoba for programming to further strengthen our supply of health human resources, including physicians, nurses, allied health professionals, and support workers. The Manitoba government is investing more than $12.5 million in an innovative interdisciplinary, interdisciplinary health and community services simulation center at Red River College Polytechnic, and I was pleased to be joined by Minister Reyes for, for that amazing announcement. And this will support its commitment to train more nurses and healthcare professionals. The investment helps us build for the future and provides quality training for students working toward careers in the health sciences. By helping these students to gain valuable skills and experience in a simulated supportive learning environment, we are building our province's health human resource capacity. Building a strong, resilient healthcare workforce through quality training means we must have the right professionals in the right place to do the job. As part of the recruit pillar, today we're also announcing incentives for nurses that return to the healthcare system by offering reinstatement of their seniority levels and providing other incentives. All of this to make returning to the workplace more attractive. We will work with our licensing bodies to make it easier for retired nurses to return to their profession as well. We will also cover the cost of testing and remedial training for returning nurses and we will continue our program to provide up to $23,000 per person in financial aid and process supports for internationally educated nurses who want to become licensed to practice in Manitoba. We are collaborating with the College of Registered Nurses of Manitoba, and I want to recognize Deb Elias, who's here with us today. Thank you so much for joining us. And through the discussions I have been having with, with Deb, we are talking about how we can build on the successful student uni program. So that's the undergraduate nurse employee program. This excellent program will adapt to including returning nurses, retired nurses, as well as internationally educated nurses. So thank you again, Deb, for for your willingness and your openness of the College of Registered Nurses of Manitoba to build on this great work. I appreciate that our regulators are looking for new ways to remove barriers to practice and we will continue to work with them to solve many of these issues. I also want to share with you that Shared Health has created a recruitment center of expertise, which is a shared service for all of our healthcare organizations. And this expertise center will strengthen recruitment efforts in this competitive market that reflects the global shortage of health human resources. We are increasing the number of funded psychiatry and psychology positions to help provide care at Manitoba hospitals given the significant impacts of the pandemic on mental health and the impacts that mental health presentations are having on emergency departments. In addition 
to some of the initiatives already announced today, we continue to review the report recommendations from a recent summit that Doctors Manitoba and the Manitoba Chamber of Commerce held on rural physician recruitment challenges. As part of our commitment to provide care close to home through Manitoba's Clinical Preventative Services Plan, we commit to recruiting more physicians to work in rural and remote locations across the province. We're also continuing discussions with paramedics, physician assistants, nurse practitioners and clinical assistants on how their special expertise can support new and innovative models of care in the province. This is a great day for Manitoba's health care system. It shows what our province can do if we all work together on solutions. Our government is strengthening health care investing in healthcare professionals and building our health human resource capacity by listening to our frontline staff, doctors, nurses and health professionals. We look forward to continuing to communicate, partner and collaborate extensively with all levels of the healthcare system. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Minister Gordon, for uh, for those comments. Uh, Doctors Manitoba President Dr. Candice Bradshaw is with us, and she will also say a few words. All right, thank you, Mr. Teitzma. Uh, so, on behalf of Doctors Manitoba, I'd like to offer a few brief remarks on today's announcement. Uh, over the last few months, you may have heard me say several times that I was optimistic that the government and health system was starting to listen to physicians' concerns and ideas. And today, I am very happy to be here and say that I believe that the government has heard us and is starting to act on our advice, including a few of the recommendations submitted in partnership with the Manitoba Chamber of Commerce just a couple of weeks ago. We all know the problems. Manitobans are facing unreasonably long wait times in emergency rooms and for surgeries and diagnostic tests. Over 150,000 Manitobans do not have a family doctor because we have the fewest in Canada. Rural and northern hospitals are facing frequent closures and making it hard to know when and where to access care. The causes of these problems are complicated, but often they all come back to one single common issue, and that is shortages and burnout amongst our healthcare workers, doctors, nurses, and allied healthcare professionals who provide the care to Manitoba patients. So when it comes to doctors, uh, we see important commitments today that I'm confident will help attract and retain physicians to Manitoba. New tools make it easier for physicians to consult each other and coordinate the care that patients need. A joint task force to reduce the heavy weight, weighty, pardon me, the weighty administrative burden on physicians. Um, help for struggling medical practices, including incentives to extend clinic hours where there's capacity to do so, and help with added costs like PPE. Expanding medical training to increase our supply of physicians and a commitment to address distress and burnout amongst physicians, nurses, and other allied healthcare professionals. There are important steps to help retain the, the physicians that we already have that couldn't be more important when you consider 50% of our members have stated they are in a high level of burnout and 40% of physician members in Manitoba have indicated they are planning to reduce clinical hours, retire or leave the province entirely in the next three years. So as physicians, we are encouraged to see so many supports for nurses and other healthcare professionals today uh, because we have been concerned about our colleagues and about the shortages, the workload pressures that they are facing as well. Manitoba has, uh, part of me, Doctors Manitoba has invested a lot of time and a lot of hard work into developing constructive proposals for the government to improve recruitment and retention. And today it's a very positive step going forward that we see so many of our suggestions in the plans going ahead. 
and I'm also encouraged by the government's comment that things are only beginning and there's more to come. So we look forward to building on today's news with additional supports to help Manitoba compete in a very highly competitive national and global environment when it comes to recruiting physicians. So thank you to Premier Stephenson and Minister Gordon for inviting me to join you today and I look forward to working with you to make your commitments a reality for physicians and for patients in Manitoba. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Bradshaw, for those comments. I'd like to now invite Jennifer Kumsty, the Executive Director for Acute Health Services at HSC Winnipeg, to the podium. Thank you, James, and good afternoon, everyone. I'm happy to be here today alongside Premier Stephenson, Minister Gordon, and all of you for an announcement that will support the health system's ongoing efforts to recruit train and retain staff. It is no secret that this has been a challenging time for healthcare, both here in Manitoba and throughout much of North America. Physicians, nurses, allied health and support staff have borne the brunt of that challenge over the past two plus years as historical staffing challenges were accelerated by the pandemic. Merely saying thank you to the tens of thousands of Manitobans who work in the healthcare team is not sufficient. These professionals have shown an enduring dedication to the patients who need their care during a particularly stressful period in our healthcare system. They have shown a commitment to one another, working together as a team to withstand the various challenges that have emerged in recent years. And they have sacrificed greatly. They have sacrificed their time with family and friends by working overtime. They have sacrificed time needed to rest and recover from providing care to Manitobans. It has not been easy. And as our staff vacancy rates show, it has been a tipping point for some, which only increases the scope of the challenges we have been facing. A number of initiatives have been implemented across the system to address patient flow and other challenges, to bring down wait times, shorten wait lists, and improve health care for everyone. These initiatives are invaluable, but it is clear that more support is needed to recruit and retain physicians nurses, allied health, and support workers. They need to have hope that things will get better. They need to have faith that we are doing all that we can to get them the reinforcements that they need. Today's announcement is a step towards providing both. This action plan provides incentives that recognize the challenges our staff have faced while encourage them that there is a plan to improve our future in healthcare. It also acknowledges the strain placed on staff when they are mandated to work overtime. We are appreciative of the support government has announced today for our healthcare staff. We are hopeful it will help the healthcare system's ongoing recruitment and retention efforts, which are key to maintaining the integrity of the healthcare system as we move through this difficult period. I want to again extend my thanks to Premier Stephenson and Minister Gordon for championing this important investment in supporting the hardworking and inspiring people who provide health care to Manitobans. Thank you. Thank you so much for this. I think we can all agree that today is a great day for Manitoba's health care system as we strengthen health care, invest in our health care workers, and build our health human resource capacity right here in Manitoba.